Hello and welcome to the Course of World History. I am your host, Mr. Samuelson, and today we are looking at the search for stability in the years following World War I. Our essential question, how was Europe showing signs of instability in the years following World War I? We're going to get started with discussion of the peace settlement, because the peace settlement in itself is going to cause some of the instability in Europe. And this happens because they really tried to create boundaries that reflect national self-determination. So they create a whole bunch of new nations. But from the start, a lot of these new nations and the old nations are both unhappy with these boundaries. They don't feel that they perfectly reflect either the national lines or provide for the security needs of those nations. So border disputes are going to flare up early and plague this process. And this map down here, you can see that the purple areas are the areas of the greatest conflict. So a lot in Southeast Asia, um, as we have this big ethnic mix down there in the old Austrian-Hungarian Empire. And um, that's gonna cause some problems. Another problem was the League of Nations being so weak. Now, the League of Nations was the brainchild of Woodrow Wilson, the US president came up with this idea and realized that the peace settlement maybe have had problems, but the United Nations, or sorry, the League of Nations would be equipped to resolve those issues later. So we made compromises in order to get a League of Nations. The problem was that the allies, the other allies really did want to punish Germany and we needed the United States in there to kind of rein back that punishment. So when the U.S. Senate refuses to allow the United States to join the League of Nations, the U.S. remains out, the moderating voice of the United States remains out, and the League of Nations becomes this tool that winds up not fairly or evenly balancing um, the issues of Europe, and it is seen as this weak institution. Here we see a political cartoon with the United States being the keystone of the United of the League of Nations, what would really make it strong enough to hold. Without that keystone that the U.S. kept out, this bridge is going to collapse as soon as somebody puts weight on it. So let's look at the French demands. Um, France was devastated by the fighting. Um, most of the fighting of World War I happened in France, most of the fighting on the Western Front, and it caused tremendous damage. And it was determined that Germany should have to pay, repara uh, pay reparations to France. This is a part of the peace treaty. So Germany is going to owe 132 billion German marks, payable in annual installments of 2.5 billion marks. Um, to translate this into dollars today, it comes out to right around a half a trillion dollars Germany is going to owe to France. So a huge chunk of money. Now, after Germany falls behind on these payments, they fall behind in year two, two, um, France decides to get their payment by other means. And they invade Germany by going through the Rhineland and seizing the Ruhr Valley in Germany, the industrial heart of Germany. And they take control of all the companies, all the industries there, and start to leech those profits in order to... Uh, in order to get their money's worth. Now, this is gonna have some bad effects really for everybody. Workers in this French occupied zone, the Ruhr Valley, are going to resist the French occupation. They, they refuse to show up to work. They're not going to work for the French just to see the, the fruits of their labor go off to France instead of helping their nation. So Germany goes on strike, German workers there go on strike, but the German uh, government wants to support those workers. So they start printing tons of money to distribute to the workers in the Rear Valley to make sure that they're still getting a paycheck. But this increase in money into the economy causes hyperinflation. And the value of money in, in uh, Germany just plummets. And uh, before too long, the purchase of a single dollar, US dollar, would have taken you 4.2 trillion marks. Whereas just a few years earlier, 
it was about a four to one ratio, four marks to a dollar. Now it's 4.2 trillion marks to a dollar. You can see these kids over here building block structures. It looks like just maybe wooden blocks, but it's not. It's stacks of German marks. They're so valueless that kids are playing with them as blocks. Down here, you can see somebody is going to be starting their stove by burning marks because the marks themselves were cheaper than paper. In 1924, seeing that this is a huge problem, the United States comes to an agreement with Germany in which the U.S. is going to loan Germany the money that they need to make their repayments and to rebuild their industry. And these are loans to Germany by private investors in the United States and public as well, uh, with the idea that Germany is going to be paying that back at a very low interest. It's every, and everybody's interest for uh, Germany to stabilize their economy. Um, and as a part of this deal, France agrees to leave the Ruhr Valley. And this actually leads to a rebound in Germany. Germany is doing pretty well up until 1929. So Europe is settling into a little bit of a stability here. The mid 1920s set, showed some positive signs. The Treaty of Locarno uh, guaranteed the borders between France, Germany, and Belgium. So they're not going to invade each other anymore in theory. Um, in 1926, Germany joins the League of Nations, so they're invited to join that organization. And in 1928, 63 nations around the world signed the kellogg briand Pact. The idea of this being to outlaw war as a tool of foreign policy. Um, the idea being, after this pact is signed, no more war. Awesome. This all starts to fall apart because of the Great Depression. And this collapse of the Great Depression um, really does lead to the collapse of peace in Europe. This gets triggered, although there were many triggers, but the biggest trigger is a collapse in wheat prices in the United States of America. New farming techniques and the opening of new land meant that it was far easier to produce wheat, and wheat was a good crop for making some money. But all of a sudden, so many people were producing it that the prices just dropped. And all of a sudden, the farmers who had taken out huge loans to buy the new land and buy new equipment couldn't repay the loans, couldn't pay back for the equipment. And the banks that had loaned this money, they now go out of business because they've lost too much money on the loans. So banks are failing across the United States. And this triggers an economic panic, which leads uh, investors in the stock market to pull out of the stock market entirely. And the stock prices just plummet. And as stock prices are plummeting, U.S. investment from private investors in German businesses as a part of rebuilding after World War I, that also stops. So the U.S. is no longer sending money to Germany. Germany can't make their reparations payments so the French economy is hit and Europe falls apart. So responses, um, U.S. stopped making loans to German businesses, stalls the German economy. Uh, 1932 was the worst year in Europe. Um, coincidentally, it was the worst year in the United, the United States as well. About 25 to 30 percent of workers in Europe were unemployed, with the worst being in Germany, where they were at or slightly above 30 percent. Now, lower wages met with higher taxes, and this just made the situation worse. Um, where people have less money in their hands, that less money is being taxed at a higher rate. So nobody's going out and spending anything, so businesses are continuing to fail. Um, people were really ready at this point to support any political leader who had a plan. And we'll see later how this leads to some extremism. So democratic states. 1919, Woodrow Wilson, said that the World War I had been fought to make the world safe for democracy. That was the plan. But democratic ideas had spread, and the Great Depression just made people question whether or not this was working. Hey, things were better before we had this whole democracy thing. Capitalism and democracy are failing us. And they start to push back against this. And that's going to lead to a lot of problems in Europe. Let's look at Germany. So Germany's government is called the Weimar Republic. 
uh, was plagued with these economic problems we talked about. Runaway inflation erased the life savings of common Germans. Um, and in the Great Depression, 30% of all Germans were unemployed, so they couldn't build any new wealth either. So this leads to a rise of fear and extremism in Germany. And it will usher the German people into the arms of this man right here, Adolf Hitler, who is going to prey upon that fear and extremism. And we'll definitely be talking more about him later. France. Uh, France was the last major nation to be hit by the Depression. They kind of weathered things a little bit better than most, but they do get hit by 1932. And France's dem democracy really fumbles how to respond. And for about 19 months, they could not form a working government. Uh, in France, they have multiple parties, not just two parties. And you can't govern unless you have a majority that agrees on forming a government together. You need to have parties working together. And for 19 months, they could not get parties to agree to work. By 1936, France does settle on a coalition of uh, groups of parties on the far left that govern really as socialist communists. Not, not as extreme a communism as you'll see in Russia, Soviet Union, um, but leaning pretty far to the left and becoming more and more socialist. Now, this socialist government will put in some things that softens the Great Depression for France, so it's, it's not as bad there as in other places. Um, they introduce a 40-hour work week, a minimum wage, two weeks paid vacation. These are, you know, socialist ideas that are now embraced by most nations around the world. All right, Great Britain. Uh, Great Britain had been like the industrial heart of Europe and the Allied powers during World War I. Um, very well-developed nation that had converted its economy to a war-based economy. But they struggled to transition back to peace. They built up this war economy that didn't shift easily to producing consumer goods. Now, just as Britain is starting to get going again, the Great Depression hits. So they do a lot of work to fix their problems, and then the Depression hits, and they're right back into bad years. Now, ironically, some of the best plans for how to deal with the Depression, and a reason why we haven't had a Depression since then, are the ideas developed by a British man, John Maynard Keynes. And we study him in economics. Okay, the idea that during hard economic times, we need to decrease taxes and increase government spending. Use government debt to get your country running again. Back during the Great Depression, everybody was doing the opposite. Everybody was increasing taxes, cutting spending, trying to balance their budgets, and it was a mess. Um, and Germany, uh, sorry, Great Britain did not listen to Keynes, and they had problems that continued. Last nation, the United States. Apart from Germany, uh, no nation was hit worse than the United States. The Great Depression was really bad in the U.S. Industrial production fell by 50%, and there were 13 million jobless people throughout the United States. Uh, this continued up until Franklin Delano Roosevelt, um, elected 1932, uh, put in place policies called the New Deal. Uh, the New Deal was designed to address these, these economic issues. Now, by themselves, the New Deal did not solve the Depression, but it made the Depression not quite as bad. It wasn't a political or social or economic revolution, but it took steps to, in a direction that kept the United States from doing as France and Russia did, and flirting with socialism as a whole. The United States never became a socialist nation, but they did make reforms that helped prevent that sort of social revolution. Uh, an example might be uh, the WPA, which was the Works, Project, Works Progress Administration, a government program that just created jobs for people. All right, that is all that I've got for you today. I hope that you learned a thing or two. I'll see you next time. Farewell.